Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, back to you with a brand new video today, and this is kind of more of a ranting video than anything. Um, I wanted to talk today about some of my experience in the repair world, as there is a good solid chance I am finally opening up my own electronic repair shop. I am going to talk to a small business loan uh, person at the bank tomorrow or Wednesday. Actually, wait, I totally realized I'm not uploading this. And you guys won't see it until, like, after November 20th, probably. So, probably, like, on Wednesday of this week, I'll probably be going to the bank and talking to a somebody about a small business loan. I'm looking for storefronts. I might do a live stream before this is even up and rolling, just looking for storefronts while I'm streaming. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, I'm sure you guys will probably know about this before this video is up, but I'm going to be trying to open up my own repair shop, and I wanted to make a video today about liquid damage repairs, and specifically a tool called TechDry. Um, this is a tool that is used by uh, the store Staples, who we all know and, well, we know them. We also know Office Max. Uh, <laughs> we're a little iffy on both of these here. Anyway, TechDry is a tool that Staples uses in all their stores for doing liquid damage repairs. Now, this is not, I'm, I'm saying this right at the beginning of this video. This is not true liquid damage repair. This is, let me suck the water out of your phone using a vacuum. You're probably still going to have water in your phone or whatever liquid it is, especially if it's something more goopy like soda. You're not getting that out of your phone with a TechDry machine. Also, big issue with TechDry is it doesn't clean the uh, it doesn't clean off the left behinds or any corrosion or replace any components on the physical circuit board. It doesn't run it through an ultrasonic cleaner. It's a vacuum slash dehydrator combo with these weird little balls inside it that suck up liquid from your phone and work in a very similar way to as if you just put your phone in a bag of rice. It doesn't work. So like, here's the do's and don'ts and correct. Do not put your phone in rice. Do not put your device in rice when it gets wet. The built in uh like powder that's in some rice most rices actually there's this powder that keeps the rice from sticking together inside the packaging if it gets wet that also gets sucked inside of your phone and basically turns into glue it turns into this weird little ugly glue that makes it so much harder to repair i can't tell you how many phones i've repaired that i've pulled them open and there's this like weird white slimy residue inside it's not what they spilled on it. Okay, maybe once or twice when it was milk. But generally speaking, it's somebody who put their phone in a bag of rice for well over 60 hours. And my old boss is calling me. I'm not doing this right now. Okay, it stopped vibrating. Thank you. Anyway, so as of, you know, rice is not the way to go about it. Now, this is true. If your device is still on, shut off your phone. If you can at least wipe off the phone, get the water off of the outside of the phone. If you do have the ability to take apart your device, let's say it's an iPhone 8, very simple to take apart. Anybody can do it. If it's an iPhone 8 and it was in fairly deep water or in water for a long time, it doesn't matter how water resistant that device is, water is still getting inside it one way or another. So if you have the ability to take that phone apart and open it up, take a hairdryer to it. Take a hairdryer to the internals. It's not a great idea, but it's better than nothing if you want to try to save the phone. Also, if you have the ability to take that apart, unplug the, unplug the battery. Unplug the battery from the phone itself if you have the ability to take it apart. Don't take it to a tech dry ASAP. I talked to a friend who used to work for Staples. Not going to say who because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Talked to a friend who used to work for Staples, and he explained how the tech drive machine worked, and he even said that he didn't ex 
really think it was worth the amount of money. Now, they do have a pricing structure where if it doesn't work, risk-free pricing for rescuing your wet phone. If it doesn't work, you get the thing back and you get the you get your money back too. So like it really is a risk-free thing. But I would not trust a tech dry machine, realistically. I'm just going to say it. So let's continue with the do's and don'ts. Don't plug it in. Don't put it in rice. You can use a hair dryer. You can. It is dry enough air that you can use a hair dryer. But realistically, it is fairly risky. So do it at your own risk, obviously, is what that sentence means. Um... And don't worry about that stuff. So other than that, also this pricing structure. Let's see. Smartphones, tablets, cameras, camcorders, wearable technology for 70 bucks. This is not worth it. 100% not worth it. This is the price that I charge uh, depending on the device. If it's an iPhone, that's the price I charge for completely taking your device apart. Uh taking the entire motherboard out of it, checking all the components for any residue or um, corrosion, attempting to fix any basic soldering that I can, running it through an ultrasonic cleaner, throwing it inside a dehydrator to suck all the liquid off, and then putting it all back together and testing it and telling you what works and what doesn't. Liquid damage repair in any sense of the word or the description of what you're doing when it comes to liquid damage is not a surefire uh, 100% fix for any liquid damage device. Liquid damage repair is meant for, okay, the device does turn on or the device doesn't turn on. If the device does turn on, you can do the basics of the liquid damage repair. Use uh, isopropyl alcohol, clean the motherboard, use a toothbrush, get any corrosion you might see, Maybe some really, really light soldering if you have to fix a spot. Um, Throw it back together and it should work. Get your data off and replace the device. If the device does not turn on at all before doing the liquid damage repair, that's when we go through and do it in a little bit more of an extreme way of running it through a dehydrator, running it uh, in through an ultrasonic cleaner, running the actual circuit board through an ultrasonic cleaner, checking the battery to make sure the battery is good and not uh, damaged or short-circuited, checking for other short-circuit issues on the uh, device. Don't, this is not worth the price. If it, if this price was here or like $34.99, that would be worth it because they're literally throwing your phone basically into a fancy microwave and expecting it to be suddenly fixed. They're not doing any corrosion repair. And then don't even get me started on this. That's not worth it. That's 100% not worth it. Maybe if it was half that price, it would be worth it. But that is not worth it 100% at all. So let's talk about the tools you do need to do electronic repair. So first of all, a dehydrator is a smart way to go. But you don't want one like this. You don't want one with metal shelves unless you have like plastic things that you can put the phone on top of um, or the circuit board. You want one with plastic trays. You don't want steel racks. You want plastic. So we probably can search by plastic. There we go. So here's some plastic ones. You don't want metal trays. You don't. It's very bad for the device. But you could use something like this. Throw one tray in right in the middle rack and let it sit for about half an hour at 50% power. That's all you really have to do. And that sucks a lot of the liquid off of the device. Then what you do is you pull the circuit board out of the dehydrator and you throw it in an ultrasonic cleaner. Now, what's an ultrasonic cleaner? I really suck at explaining how these things work, but these are incredibly useful. I love using them. They more often than not have actually, I have seen them fix a liquid damage device and suddenly have it turn on. So what these actually do is it's a multi-purpose cleaner um it uh, thanks to a 40 kilohertz ultrasonic frequency it actually 
gently clean. Okay, so it vibrates the water, and that's what loosens everything up, and it cleans it. So that's a good way to explain it. I've never actually known the specifics on how it works. I just know it buzzes really loudly when you're using it. So you throw the circuit board into the ultrasonic cleaner with the ultrasonic cleaner liquid. There is a specific liquid for it. You throw that all in there, and then um, after about 15 to 20 minutes, you pull it out, let it sit and cool down, use more isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush or um, something else to like try to dry it off, throw it back in the dehydrator to make sure it's all dry. Sometimes even using flex, flux off is very useful in this situation too, even though you're maybe not doing any soldering, but throw it all back together and you're good to go. So the next thing that you might need is a soldering station. This is one of my favorite soldering stations I've ever used. I love this thing. You have the hot air station on one side, which goes up pretty hot. And then you also have airflow control. You have the soldering iron is right here and you can see the temperature and everything have all the different tips that you might need, especially these really long, super pointy ones, super useful and different tips for angling the hot air. One of the best hot air stations I've ever used. I love this hot air station. It'll be the one that's in my shop once if and or I open my shop. If or I open my shop. Um, so you would use that along with microscopes. So let's go on Amazon and I'll show you the microscopes you can use. Soldering microscope. There's several of these you can use. There's so many and you can, they range in price immensely. If I was doing anything for like video recording, like doing a video here with you guys, I would probably use this one because it's just a USB output to a computer with a camera. Incredibly useful. But if I'm doing the repairs myself, this is what I got used to using at CPR cell phone repair. But this is really good for demo purposes. And it actually lets you look up and see what you're doing. It is a learning curve. Very much so it's a learning curve. These are also really nice too because they're also cameras that'll zoom in really well. These are a little bit of a learning curve because you're looking at the screen and moving your hands around underneath it. And you've got to kind of get used to doing that. It, it's difficult the first few times but you practice on maybe a dozen devices and you'll be fine with getting your hands to do what you want to do while looking at a screen instead of looking down at your hands i'm doing all these hand signals like you guys can see me i don't have a webcam but i would get either one of these or one of these or i'd probably have both realistically i'd probably have both because this is a nice little light as well for shining on it but i think realistically i would probably have both because there's strengths and weaknesses to both. And there's actually similar ones to this that also have an HDMI output, or you can record straight to the SD card like it shows here, or even wireless display. It's incredibly useful, these things. Some of these are very cool, the things that they can do, especially the ones that have the dual lights. That's really helpful because you have no blind spots from one hand or another. There's many of these that I could recommend, but... I won't actually recommend one until I have my own shop. But you would also use these microscopes for soldering. So you can see these small components and try to fix them. That's That would help immensely in repairing things like um, iPhone backlight doesn't turn on anymore. You would replace the resistor and you would use this to be able to see it. So that's what's very useful here. There's a lot of different things that you need for liquid damage repair, and TechDry is not it. TechDry does not clean off the corrosion. TechDry doesn't do anything more than basically throw your phone in a vacuum chamber and expect it to suck all the water out. That is pretty much what a TechDry machine does. It's not worth the pricing. This is ridiculous. If this was $34.99 or something like that, it would be worth it. Even though it is a risk-free thing and they give you your money back, I also have seen devices actually fail after doing a liquid damage repair because liquid damage is not set in stone. If you also break that connection of the circuit that maybe that corrosion is creating, suddenly that solder is not there anymore because of the corrosion eating it. That's what corrosion does. 
So there's many, many issues with doing liquid damage repair. And I really hope I get this shop opened up because I really want to make these videos. This is what I am the most knowledgeable about is hardware, which was completely by accident. I was not meant to get into hardware, but that's okay. So I hope you guys learned something from this video. Liquid damage repair is not all it's out to be. It's very hands-on and tech dry is a very bad name for liquid damage but i hope you guys learned something from this video i'll talk to you guys later glad to be back in a recording mood and i'll talk to you guys soon peace out